Hey guys, today I want to talk about Brees DJ Pancake. So Brees Pancake was born in 1952 in South Charleston, West Virginia. He studied creative writing as a graduate student at the University of Virginia, where those who knew him say that he sort of styled himself as an outsider, basically sort of rejecting perhaps the more affluent culture of his college colleagues, instead choosing to embrace his rural Appalachian West Virginian culture. One of Pancake's mentors and acquaintances or friends, James Allen McPherson, described him as an empopath. And so I'll paraphrase, he says, someone with an extraordinary ability to empathize with other people and the fictional characters he created. Just before his 27th birthday, Breeze took his own life, um, and so during his lifetime, he had six stories published, but we're now left with the, the 12 in the Stories of Breeze Pancake, originally published in 1983 by Little Brown. His stories have been praised by dozens of writers, ranging from Joyce Carol Oates to Kurt Vonnegut. Um, in fact, in a letter to, I'm going to read it. In a letter to fellow writer John Casey, Kurt Vonnegut said, I give you my word of honor that he is merely the best writer, the most sincere writer I've ever read. What I suspect is that it hurt too much, was no fun at all to be that good. You and I will never know. So for the most part, these stories take place in rural West Virginia, in small towns, with characters that are coal miners, wanderers, day laborers, farmers, all of whom are facing a great deal of loss and all of whom are sort of wildly fighting against that loss even in the face of its inevitability. So I first came across Brees while doing a little bit of research for writers from West Virginia. Uh, my mother's side of the family is from West Virginia and sort of the eastern panhandle of, of the state. I was pretty surprised about the, the lack of popular literary fiction from, from that part of the country um, in general. I think I read The Trilobites first in the Atlantic. It was public, it's still published online. I think you can, you can find it. So I dug up a few more stories and ended up buying this book, and I'll tell you, this is absolutely one of my favorite collections of short stories. Um, so let's talk about it a little bit. So in terms of style, Breeze Pancake has often been compared to writers like Ernest Hemingway in the sense that his writing is direct, and he's pretty parsimonious with the words that he chooses, um, and really all of the emotion is just packed into the detail. Another thing, the central characters of these novels are often extremely violent and, and brutal in some cases. In some sense they all seem to be fighting against this collapsing world. And these are characters who are losing everything, you know, losing families, losing loved ones losing innocence and dealing with the struggle um, in very violent ways. So in the first story in this collection, Trilobites, you've got a central character, Kali, who is living on a failing farm with his mother. His father has just passed away of uncertain circumstances and the farm is being frequented by this sort of sketchy loans person who is trying to buy the land. And Kali is sort of this young man early on in the in the story is hunting a turtle and skinning it and he looks up and sees this this lone, per, lone person standing across across the way and so on one hand you've got this character who's just absolutely tied to the land this banker or this loans person who's coming by just looking at this place as a piece of property or as an asset as opposed to the sense of place that the character feels um, which is this much deeper emotional connection. Um, I hope that makes sense. Next you've got this character Ginny in the story who is Kali's former girlfriend um, coming back to, from college to visit 
and basically she heads out with with Kali. She's totally changed. You know, she's no longer um, the same person that um, Kali has in his mind of of who she is. So she's kind of moved on in a sense. Um, and it's really awkward, but you feel that there's this real pain in um, in a person who can't explain himself um, and can't connect with people in his mind. Um, he has these these real connections with. It's almost adolescent in its painfulness. I mean, there's this kid kind of wearing his heart on his sleeve, and and it's just not working, and there's just this disconnect. So it's like the world is just clumsily moving along in its own sort of violent way, while the characters in it are just kind of are kind of stuck, and they have these deep-rooted connections to this place that is just kind of like burning down and collapsing, collapsing around them. So I think that that theme is actually reflected pretty well in this really interesting opening scene of the story Fox Hunters, which I'll read from now. The passing of an autumn night left no mark on the patchwork blacktop of the secondary road that led to Parkins. A gray ooze of light began to crest the eastern hills above the hollow and sift a blue haze through the black boughs of linking oak branches. A small wind shivered, and sycamore leaves chattered across the pavement, but were stopped by the fighting green orchard grass on the berm. The opossum lay quietly by the roadside. She had found no dead farm animals in which to build her winter den, not even a fine empty hole. She packed her young across the road and into the leaves where the leathery carcass of another opossum lay. She did not pause for sniffing or sentiment. Metal click. She stopped. Fire. She hunkered in the tight fear against the ground, her young clutching closer to her fur. Soft, rhythmless clumpings excited her blood, and she sank lower. With day and danger advancing, fear was blushing in her as she backed cautiously into higher brush. From her hiding, she watched a giant enemy scuffling on the blacktop, and a red glow bouncing brightly in the remnant of her night. Bo felt this to be the royal time of his day, these sparse, solitary moments when the rest of the world was either going to bed or not up yet. He was alone, knew the power and singularity, yet was afraid of it. Insecurity crawfished through his blood, leaving him powerless again. Soon he began a conversation to make the light seem closer to the road. Ah. So I think that scene is obviously so powerful and really reflective of the characters in this book as a whole. You've got this possum whose young are just clenching to its fur as it scurries, um, you know, past the dead body of another possum and, and not really feeling anything about it other than, other than fear and, and the anxiety of being chased by this unknown force. And then sort of the juxtaposition of the natural sort of burrow that the that the possum is in across the blacktop um, that these hunters are sort of chasing it and you've got the metal click and fire and these these sort of mechanical elements which which must just you know strike fear into into this animal's brain and and I think it's absolutely beautiful there there's a story in this book called Time and Again which um, is one that really stuck with me um, for a little bit of, of a different reason. It's kind of like this dark, gothic type tale. You've got a war veteran snowplow driver who is, um, is plowing the, these mountain roads um, at night. Um, he picks up a hitchhiker who's this young kid who jumps in the truck with him and, and the snow is falling and it reminds the, the snowplow driver of being dropped in, in France, um, presumably during World War II, and he's sitting there sort of reflecting upon this. He's sort of starting up conversation with the kid, and they're talking about how hitchhikers on this stretch of road have been disappearing. And so there's this sort of, you know, 
foreshadowing, this sort of underlying uh, tension there. And all the while, this, this driver is, is still sort of recollecting about the brutality of war. And I think in one sentence he says something, or he, he recalls basically how easily people die. And, um, and that really stuck with me. And so, as the story goes on... Sorry, I ran out of batteries, and I might run out of batteries again. But anyway, so these stories read... A lot like poetry, I feel like they're best read slowly and reread. I know that I have uh, enjoyed them even more, sort of revisiting them for this review. And um, even though they are really of a specific place, I feel like the characters sort of transcend their, their specific um, situations and environments. And I feel like Breeze Pancake had such a strong understanding of human emotion and the ways that we struggle against loss and against the inevitability of the loss of the things that we hold dearest. And, and that's why I highly recommend this book and these stories. So, if you can find a copy at your library, I highly recommend picking it up. Otherwise, support your local bookstores. Those places are awesome. Otherwise, you can find a link to it in the description below. So, if you guys have suggestions for other literary fiction, nonfiction, poetry, leave some suggestions in the comments below. I hope to hear from you. Thanks for watching.